30 days ago, we took three identical Bitcoin ASIC miners, plugged them in at the exact same time and configured them to three very popular Bitcoin mining pools, all to determine which mining pool actually pays out the most Bitcoin over 30 days. Let's go ahead and take a look at the hardware, the testing, the pools, and finally the results to crown one mining pool, the winner. Today's video is sponsored by the team over at asicmarketplace.com. With crypto mining hardware prices dropping, it's critical to find an online store you can trust with your ASIC purchases. The team at asicmarketplace.com has you covered with some of the most competitive pricing on the market. No matter what brands you're looking for, ASIC Marketplace has it. To name just a few, Bitmain, Goldshell, What's Miner, IB Link, iPolo, Jazz Miner, and many more. There are no surprises with ASIC Marketplace. The price listed on their website includes shipping. Imagine that. Finally, ASIC Marketplace takes the buying experience to the next level by accepting cryptocurrency as payment directly on their store. Go check out ASIC Marketplace today via the link in this video's description down below, as well as save $50 at checkout with the discount code the hobbyist miner what's going on miners and welcome back to the hobbyist miner channel well two months ago i actually placed an order and bought two additional 100 terahash bitcoin asic miners just to actually kick off this test 30 days ago and we finished our testing three miners on three different pools all mining bitcoin to see which one is well the most profitable so let's go ahead and dive in all right all right so let's look at the hardware that we're using now i bought my hardware quite some time ago and the prices have definitely fluctuated especially since bitcoin broke that thirty thousand dollar mark but if you're interested this is the hardware that we're actually using for today's test it's the bitmain ant miner S19J Pro, and that's the 100 terahash unit. And I actually went with this unit for a few reasons, and I thought I would at least explain. So first off, I already had a 100 terahash unit, and my goal was to get two additional other ASICs that were identical in every way, shape, or form, so that I could do not only this test, but some future testing that was out there. I also looked at the 100 terahash unit because of the price point, the price points on these things have really come down. And based off of where you buy from, this one here we're showing off is at asicmarketplace.com. But take a look at what else is out there on the market. There's a lot of used units out there. There's a lot of other places to look at. Just be super careful if you need some guidance. Please stop in my Discord channel. We have an entire channel dedicated to ASIC mining as well as places to purchase if you're unsure and just getting into the market. Finally, I went with the 100 terahash unit as well because there's a lot of firmware out there and these operating systems out there that you can kind of take these units to the next level. So I've been able to actually take my unit and under proper cooling, air cooling, but in proper cooling during cooler weather, I've been able to overclock this thing with the Luxor OS up to 120 terahash which is crazy. So you have a lot of flexibility. So keep that in mind if you guys are in the market for an ASIC miner. There is a lot of flexibility there when it comes down to how well these can perform if you have the right software. So on top of that, I wanted to show you, here is one of the units that we use, one out of the three units that we use during our test. Now, it's a 100 terahash unit, but you can see it's only around 79, 78 terahash. Well, I decided to run all of these units. If you go to settings, they have a low power mode. I'm actually restricted at my current location. That's why I'm actually building a second shed setup so I can run these at full bore there versus here, a max down on power. So all three of these units are actually set up on low power mode, which is something that Bitcoin brought to the table a few months back. If you want a video on the low power mode and comparing it, I'll put a link directly down below to a video I did on the S19J Pro in low power mode, how to flash the firmware as well as some of the power and hash rate results. So we did three pulls. Our first pull was nice hash. Our second pull was Luxor. And our final third pull was F2 pull. And how did I determine what pools to actually do? Well, 
I just kind of picked ones that were super popular and we're kind of going to circle back to our future pools because guess what? Testing is not over after I go over these results. The winner, the pool that won is going to stay. It's kind of like an Iron Man challenge. The pool that won and mine the most Bitcoin is going to stay in our testing and we're going to add two more. And I actually put a poll out there asking you guys, the community, which other pools we should add into this Iron Man challenge that we're doing. So we'll talk about that at the end of the video. If you guys are looking at a date, so right now it's based because you guys are most likely in the future. Hello, future. It's July 5th. And if you're watching this in the future, I want to let you know that on July 5th, the price of Bitcoin at the time recording this at about 1030 PM Eastern was $30,489.78. We're actually down 1.2% today in Bitcoin, but hopefully that's relative. Hopefully Bitcoin is double by the time you watch this days, months, or maybe years in the future at this point in time. So let's go ahead and take a look at our results for our testing. All right, so here's what we did. We plugged them all in and every day I went in and recorded the following day, actually day after the metrics directly from the pool on what was mined on the date that you can see specified. So we started on the first day was 5 30 2023 i actually eliminated that 29th day because it wasn't a full day so we started on the 29th we actually went ahead and started made use the 30th to make it a full day's metrics and you can see here we have three separate columns our nice hash column for bitcoin mind our luxor column for bitcoin mind and our f2 pool for bitcoin mind and we ran this for 30 days total all right, so what were our 30 day results? Well, we're gonna talk about that here in a minute, but I wanted to mention the fact of like, why is this important? Like, what does it matter? Well, believe it or not for me, I wanna mine on the pool that's gonna pay me the most Bitcoin. Which pool is gonna give me the most Bitcoin in my wallet? That's all I care about. I don't care what pool it is, to be honest with you. I just want more Bitcoin in my wallet. And I think sometimes we get on these FOMO trains or sometimes we social media buzz trains where we're like, oh, we need to mine to this pool because we heard it was the most profitable. Well, do your own testing, but keep in mind, testing like this, the reason I did three was so that I could test three at exactly the same time. Because if you test this week versus two weeks from now, it may be totally different based off of the entire pool's performance. So keep that in mind when you go ahead and look forward. But let's scroll down and take a look at the results. So 30 days. After 30 days, we were able to see that nice hash actually mined the most total Bitcoin at 0 0.00626331. Following directly behind that is actually F2 pool at 0 0.00588188. And finally, coming in third was actually Luxor at 0 0.00587708. Now, you can see some percentages there directly below those numbers. Luxor mined 93.83% of what actually NiceHash did. And F2 pool mined 93.91% of actually what NiceHash did. So you're losing out on a pretty significant amount of Bitcoin. And if we actually want to measure that in a dollar value, which we all speak dollar, right? Let's go ahead and scroll down here. Well, you can see as of today at right around 1030 PM Eastern in a 30 day period, our S19 J Pro on NiceHash mined $190.48 in one month. And on the far right side, which was F2 pool, I'm looking around my camera here, $178.87. And then finally Luxor, $178.72. So you might say 93 to that 100% isn't a big deal, but it is. In just one month, you're losing out on like $12. Now think of that over an entire year. So those are some things to definitely keep in mind. Now, if we go ahead and scroll down, you can see on the averages per day, that there is a decent average difference between pool to pool on each day. And this is based on that 30 day time period. And so when you're looking at pools out there and trying to decide on like, all right, which pool do I use? 
These are some metrics that I wish I had before I got into Bitcoin mining and why I decided to do this test today. So is F2 pool better than Luxor? And then is nice hash better than F2 pool and Luxor? Uh, maybe, I guess. I mean, when we're looking at Bitcoin profitability in a 30 day period, nice hash outperformed F2 pool and Luxor every day but one day. If you actually go ahead and scroll over on this document, take a look. You see this column on the right hand side, daily most BTC mined. Nice hash was the most profitable pool out of these three pools every single day, except for one day in a 30 day time period. And I know nice hash kind of has this like stigma and rumor of being terrible and stuff, but I'll be honest with you. I don't care. I just care what pool pays me the most Bitcoin to my wallet. And out of these three, nice hash, Luxor and F2 pool, nice hash is the winner. And the evidence is in the metrics. All right. So where do we go from here? Well, nice hash stays in nice hash gets the crown for this one, but we want to add two more pools in Luxor and F2 pool. You're out. You lost boys. So now I went ahead and put a poll up on my community page on the YouTube channel and I threw it out there. Over the last 30 days, I've been putting three S19J Pro 100 Terahash head to head on a pool to determine which pool truly pays out in more Bitcoin. One of the things I asked about in there was what pools do you wanna see me add next? Well, based off of these results, we're going to be adding Ant Pool and Binance. So what I did was I went over, and if you guys aren't familiar, you're looking for all different Bitcoin pools out there, you can go over to miningpoolstats.stream, a very popular pool. You can put in whatever coin you're looking for. In this case, I put in Bitcoin, and it will actually give you all the details out there to let you know, you know what pool is out there, their hash rate, their, their, their blocks, their last found, all those details. And Ant Pool and Binance are in the top three. So there's no surprise that the community voted to see Ample and Binance kind of in this gauntlet, we'll call it, or in this test. So I haven't mined to Ample before. I believe there's some KYC we have to go through to even mine to this pool. But on top of that, we then have Binance as well. I've never even created an account on Binance. So this definitely is going to be an experience for me. So what do we do now? What's our next steps? Well, it's time to do some more testing. So I'm going to go ahead and load up this exact same test. Nice hash, ant pull and Binance. We're going to start our testing at exactly the same time. And we're going to let this run for 30 more days. And in 30 days, I'll see you back here, right here on the YouTube channel. And we're going to crown another winner. And then that winner is going to stay in it. Nice hash is going to be really hard to beat, but I'm going to go ahead and put ant pull and Binance up to the test. Well, guys, that's it for today's video. I love your thoughts and feedback on this test that I did. Were you surprised to see that Luxor and F2 pool were significantly almost 7% less than Nice Hash? Leave a comment down below. I'd also like to know what pool are you guys Bitcoin mining to? I love to share and find out more from the community. Well, if you guys enjoyed this video, give it one of these and I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye.